And so core configuration files we saw today were core site.xml, HDFS site.xml for HDFS, for MapReduce, it's MapRed site.xml. So when I say HD, when we say HDFS, it means name node and data node. When we say MapReduce, it means job tracker and task trackers. So these are some examples. So we HDFS side, you can also specify DFS.replication factors. So like we did DFS.data.dir, DFS.name.dir, you can specify replication factors. If you don't specify, by default is three, but if you want to change it, you can make it one. And core side, you specify the name, name node URI, which we did. So, and then in HDFS site, you specify data.dir that we did today for the data nodes, the list of directories where data node is going to store the blocks. And similarly, there's something called fs.checkpoint.dir. This is used by secondary name node. So we are going to cover that in our next session when we do talk about the secondary node. Today's session is basically make sure that we are able to set up clusters in different modes and basically understand how configuration is done and how you can bring the systems up. Now, configuration tuning and more details about configuration is something we are going to cover in our future modules because this is our module to see understand basically how you can configure Hadoop and how you set up Hadoop and so so many things to so start all can be run only from the name node right so place where you define your so basically so you have to set up passphrase less setup right so name node should be able to SSH to all the machines and run basically the command so you have to set up that SSH from the node Passphrase less setup, uh, sorry, passphrase less SSH setup, and the node where you have that, from that node, you can basically run start or stop. It does not have to be name node, it could be any other node also. So, where is saying one master and many slaves, right? So, master means only, so as you have seen, that for HDFS, master is name node. For job, MapReduce engine, the master is job tracker, right? So, there are two masters, and then secondary name node is also master, and slaves are for HDFS system. Basically, slaves are all data nodes, and for MapReduce engine, all the slaves are task trackers. So we have, we are definitely going to have multiple nodes and multiple slaves that would depend on the number of nodes in your cluster. If you have twenty nodes, basically those nodes are slaves, or they are data nodes. They are data nodes and task trackers. So Mohammed is saying, so you mean we only need to start everything from name node. So as I just explained in Sumathi's question, the place where you have passphrase less setup, we'll quickly look at that also. That's the place where you are going to basically start the name node. All right. So Mohammed says there's no need to log in today at all. Right. So once you have your start all script, you don't need to log in unless there is some issue with the data node and you need to look at data node logs because that you cannot do from an engine machine, right? So if you are have to look at data node logs for some issue or data node, you just want to see if say drive gone bad or something, then you have to log into data node. But for start and stop purposes, you won't have to log into data node. And in MapRed site, as, as I said, we specify the job tracker name host name and the ip so job tracker runs on 8021 rpc port and these are the properties that we define for job tracker so again we are going to discuss these in detail the basic one that we need is mapred.job.tracker where you specify the name of the job tracker and the port the rpc port that it uses so more detail on configuration files you can basically read from here so these are the main three configuration files that we discussed today so can read from there so we just looked at slaves and masters so all the slaves would be the host where data node and task tracker runs and master would be uh, mostly just secondary name node so hadoop env.sh is the place where you are basically going to set up your java home as we did and you also can specify a lot of other parameters like we did export hadoop underscore, underscore heap size so you can say heap size for data node heap size for task tracker heap size for name node so this is the place where you will define the environment variables for hadoop and there's also something called hadoop metrics dot properties that we'll discuss in our further which is used for reporting so we'll look at it in our later slides so as you see, the critical properties are basically fs.default.name, which is the name node uh, URI. Then tmpdir, in our, if you don't define, it goes under slash tmp, where you saw that I, I didn't have the permission and it failed to come up, right? So slash tmp is by default. You can also change it if your slash tmp is small, because a lot of in production environments, slash tmp is usually a small mount. 
so they move it to a bigger mount because slash tmp is needed a lot as we go along the course you will see and for map reduce engine you have to specify the job tracker name so these are the critical properties so these are the like minimal properties that you need to get up your cluster and pseudo cluster mode demo that i just did so basically we had basically everything on one machine and then we looked at the web uris and we are also going to continue this further so we looked at the name node web uri we are also going to look at job tracker task tracker and data node in our future sessions so now let's look like a like a cluster configuration setup that's uh i think uh uh, I think uh, Rajkumar or somebody, Santosh, I guess, brought it up that uh, we need to look, we want to see how the configuration looks like. So let's look at the uh, Facebook cluster. So what it looks like, like it has two major clusters. One cluster is 1100 machines and each machine has eight cores and it has above about 12 petabyte of storage. So that's a big cluster. And there's a 300 machine cluster, which has 24 cores, that uh, 2400 cores. That means each machine has eight cores and it has about three petabytes of storage. So these cores are basically the ones that are going to decide how many mappers and reducers you are going to use. So if it has eight cores, as we discussed yesterday, that you might say, okay, five mappers, two reducers and one data node, one task tracker. So that's how the configuration. So we'll see that in our, um, machine and then we say each core node has eight cores and 12 terabytes of space so again this is a commodity hardware and they use streaming that we discussed yesterday they use java apis and they also have hive which we'll discuss in our uh, further classes that hive is a sql kind of engine so And then cluster architecture we saw today was we have masters, we have name node, we have job tracker. Master runs on 50070 web UI by default. Job tracker runs on 50030. And on slaves, we have data nodes and task tracker. So every slave node will run a data node as well as a task tracker that we did today in our uh, distributed setup. And in the cluster architecture, if we again, we see that we have the client and then we have HDFS engine, we have MapReduce engine, HDFS engine is owned by name node and name node will have data nodes and MapReduce engine is owned by job trackers and job trackers will have task trackers. And, but since we are saying that machine on every slave machine, we run both task tracker as well as a data node. So in job tracker, task tracker is up because job tracker is interacting with task tracker, but on the name node side, data node is up because name node is interacting with data node. And look, and we look at some network configuration. So just it's just added for people who are enthusiastic about the cluster. So while you're saying can data node and task tracker be on the same machine? So while that's the common configuration that data node and task tracker are usually on the same machine. So Mohammed saying, do we need to install or download Hadoop on data nodes also? Yes. So that's what I said that on my machines, I already did all the steps that we did on single machine, basically download Java, download Hadoop, set up everything. So ev on every machine, you have to do the same thing. And you, then you have to set up the configuration files based on the role. So if, if you see here, now we have we have different racks so on one rack you may have say have name node secondary name node job tracker on rest of the racks you have slave nodes and then you have switches on each of the racks and at the top you have basically the the top yeah, router which is and then the gateway node client which is going to talk to name node and get the location to data nodes so you can see that client also have a route directly to the data nodes because it is going to interact directly with this the nodes in the cluster and this is a sample uh, network configuration that you have the nodes, then you have the switches, and th then you can see that each of, and on, on the end you have a 10 gigabit ethernet uh, cluster, a connector, and that's called a spine or a backbone. So you can see that each of the switches is having for redundancy, trying, ha talking to, is connected to multiple such spines. And then on this end, basically this is, you can see that these are teamed, right? So if say this machine has one NIC card and there's two, another NIC card, so it can be teamed together to basically double the, basically the ether, ethernet speed and the data movement speed. So every rack will have like a switch. And then when data moves from here, it goes via this route. And, and then you can see that these are like 100 gigabit uh, network so usually that's what is recommended for Hadoop sorry not 110 gigabit uh, network so that's what everybody is going people used to 
start with one, but nowadays everybody uses 10 gigabit uh, network. And then multi-load cluster, we saw, we look at the demo also, how to start every node on every cluster. So I would encourage each of you to try that. And so that would be, I guess, one of your assignments for this week. And then for further reading, you can look on these documents about Hadoop cluster setup, Hadoop cluster configuration, Hadoop on Amazon AWS. I think that was Sanjay's question. Can we do that? So Praveen is saying, do we need to configure RAID on each data node? No, because data nodes are our commodity hardware and we don't want RAID there because data nodes are just going to store data and you have multiple copies of that data on the rack. So we don't need RAID. You can have RAID on name node where you are, say, for example, uh, storing the metadata at multiple locations, right? So in that case, you can have RAID, but on data nodes, you don't need RAID. And that was another question. I forgot the name who asked that what was the configuration of each of the nodes. So let's look at this. So name node, as we said, it would be a high, it has high memory requirements. So it will have a lot of RAM and it does not need a lot of hard drive. So it could just go with like say one terabyte space and processor, we are saying eight cores, but it can even go with less of that. And ethernet is three times the 10 gigabit connection. And we are saying 64 bit CentOS, so that's the name node. And data nodes, you can see they might not be high on RAM, but you will have a lot of hard disk on data nodes because data nodes are supposed to store the data. And usually we'll see that you'll have multiple drives. So in this case, we are saying we have six drives, each of two terabytes each. So data nodes are storage intensive, right? So that's why they are more inclined towards having better storage. So this hard disk is say 12 terabytes, but name node has just one terabyte because name node is only storing metadata, which is usually in gigs it never even reaches terabytes but data node will always store data in terabytes and and processor it says two cores but usually it would be like quad dual quad core and it would be like 10 to 12 minimum cores on data node and secondary name node will have similar configuration as primary name node and it could have even less sometimes but usually people keep it same as primary name node so in case basically the name node in case say this machine goes down and then secondary name node basically can you can copy metadata from say an nfs location and basically bring this machine up as a primary name node it won't it's not a hot standby so it won't come up by itself you have to basically copy the metadata and then you have to basically start the name node process manually so for that reason a lot of times people make it like same configuration as name node and if it is just doing secondary name node then usually people make it less ram as we see in this case it is not having a 64 gigs of ram as the name node is having so those are basically a typical uh, configuration in terms of memory and hard disk and processors so when you look at the Hadoop cluster, you will always start with a single machine. You might have a local, you will have a pseudo distributed mode. And then once it you are doing a POC and you see, oh, Hadoop works for me, then you'll set up a small cluster where you have fully distributed mode. You start initially with four to six nodes. And then once you see that your data size is increasing and you have so many users who want to use Hadoop, then you'll start planning on the large cluster. That's when you will start looking into replication factor, number of cores and performance tuning, how much memory is needed for each task. So those are the kind of things. So we are going to usually mostly concentrate on this part in our future modules, like what a large cluster looks like and what kind of parameters should be tuned for a large cluster. So that's what would be our basis.